Ooh, that top one is tight. All right, so to get these axles out right here, you're gonna to have to take your brake assembly off. And to do that, instead of taking the caliper off the bracket itself, what I'm gonna do is take it off as a whole assembly. There's two 19 millimeter bolts that hold these on on the back right here. And we're gonna take those off and then we can set it up. You can tie it up, whatever. And then after that, we'll yank this rotor off and then we'll start taking the e-brake assembly and the wheel speed sensor out these bracket bolts can be pretty tight because they do have loctite on them most of the time These right here are going to be a little tight due to the dust shield because they kind of go like under and behind the dust shield. So I like to bring this one around and just set it up on the spring right there. And you'll have to bring it under and around because it goes under the spring and not on top of it. And your rotor should just slide off like that. Right. and underneath here are your e-brake and to take this off I'm going to move you well actually I'm going to show you how to take this off first this is your wheel speed sensor there's going to be two 12 millimeter nuts on here or bolts you take those off and it should pull right out like I said it should just slide right out and if you want to, you can pull it out of that little bracket. It just slips out like that and set it off to the side. All right, now I'm going to move you to this side so you can see what I'm doing with the e-brake cable. Because there's two nuts on the back, I believe. Uh, no, there's just one, one bolt on the back that holds it in. And then there's like a pin in here that you'll have to remove. And I'll show you how I do that. Right here is your e-brake assembly. It goes under this pad and that lower one. What I like to do is lift up on this pad. Well, if I can do it right. And pull that piece out. And then do the same for the bottom. Get it to come out. All right. And then you can slide this out, and there's a pin right there. What you can do, all you gotta do is just, it should push right out. Right. And that pretty much is how you take the assembly off. <clears throat> right. See. That's your little e brake assembly. <clears throat> That's all your levers and everything right there. And then on the back, I believe it's a 14 millimeter. Yes. And once you loosen it, you should be able to take it out with your hand. That is the bolt for your e-brake. You should be able to just pull back. Uh, I think got hung on something. All right, there you go. You can just set that down. All right, let's move you back to the other side so you can see behind the axle. Uh, there's four nuts that mount to the axle assembly you take those off i believe they're 17 millimeters take those off and then you got to slide the axle assembly out with the backing plate and e-brake assembly all in one off or out and there's no c-clips or anything in this differential to hold the axles in i don't know how well you can see that because of this bracket assembly piece but you can see this one right here 
that is one of the nuts I'm talking about. If you have a bigger ratchet, it's going to be hard to get in there on the bottom due to the spring perch plate. But on the top, you should be able to get to it fairly easy with a ratchet. You can use, <clears throat> sorry, you can use a wrench to get the bottom ones. I think my ratchet will fit in there just enough. Sometimes if you loosen them, you should be able to thread them off with your fingers, but if they have a little burr or something on there, it might be a little harder. That one should be a little bit tighter. And I like to keep all my stuff side specific. You know, if it come off of the driver's side, I like to put it back on the driver's side. All right, let me go grab a pan to put underneath this. That way, because there's going to be some fluid, so be ready to catch some of the diff fluid that's going to come out of here. As you can see, it's already moving. Let's see if we can pull her out. Oh, yeah. Coming out actually pretty good. There's your axle assembly. I like to use a transmission pan off of, you know, like a rear wheel drive or something. It's got a little bit deeper sump in it just to catch any fluid that comes out from underneath those. Your axle's right there. And the whole kit we got comes with a new one. So we're going to put new ones in there. All right, so I'm gonna show y'all how I get these seals out right here. I use a combination of a hammer, a chisel, and a seal puller, because you don't really have enough room to get this seal puller up in there, because it just barely misses it. Well, hold on, maybe able to. Okay, it grabbed a hold of something. Let's see if we can get her out. Breaking the lift up the seal. We'll see if we can knock her out the rest of the way with this chisel. Alright, should be able to get it now. Yep, there we go. So we'll wipe that out. We'll have some scratches and stuff on it from using a seal puller and all that stuff to get it out. But she should be fine going back in. Also, there is an O-ring around the axle. I can get it out. Right here. There, go. there you go. Yeah, There's an O-ring right there. Do not lose that. Or replay or try to replace it one or the other uh, in the kit it come with a new one so we're gonna put a new one on there and all that does is just seal up around the bearing where uh, the taper is on the back side of your axle and back and plate okay, so I got this cleaned out and I may go ahead and install the new seal for you here is the Nissan part number right there for anybody. And they come with some grease already in there for the taper seal. <clears throat> but on the outside of the uh, seal right here, I'm gonna put a little bit of RTV. Right there you can see I put RTV on it. This is what I use. 
It's just ultra gray uh, gasket maker. It's 82194. Let's go and get it started up in here. And that's pretty much putting a seal taking a seal out and putting the wheel seal back in there's nothing behind it like I said, you probably won't have to collapse it just to get it out because you don't really have enough room to put this in there it'll barely catch the lip but all it does is just rip the lip out so a good chisel and a small hammer and collapse it and it should pull right out all right now we're back underneath the truck we're going to take the actual carrier out of it now so on the left side I put one punch mark on the cap for the carrier and on the differential itself and I don't know how good you can see that hold on but I put one punch mark here and one there then I put two on this side and two on the case on that side that way I put them all on the bottom so I know that the caps the punch marks go on the bottom and also I know what side each one of them go on as well but to take this off you're going to need a 17 and it has the four bolts two per cap and like I said it would be a 17 they I think they torque to like 70 foot pounds so they're not like extremely tight but enough to where you're going to maybe need a half inch Seated on that right. Mm, that one's on that tight. All right, there we go. Ooh. Yeah, those got a little torque to them. That one right there, especially. Just don't want to round off the head of the bolt. So, another tip I like to do is put like a thick cover or something down underneath it so in case if it does come out it doesn't hit the ground and possibly mess up the teeth or anything on the gear all right so I got it out here it is right here now there's barren races on they go around these and they should be shims on each side if you're not doing a complete ring gear overhaul and everything make sure you keep your um, spacers to the side that they come out of that way you will know exactly what the spacing was beside each one but either way I'm going to be resetting the pinion because I'm putting new bearings on it and everything and it may have to be adjusted side to side anyway but we're going to go with the originals. I do have shims, but I'm going to go with the originals first. But we're going to be replacing the spider gears in here and the uh, bearings on the side. And I'm going to show you the process of that. I'm going to go ahead and take the bearings off now. How I'm going to do this is I'm just going to clip these cages, get all the bearings out of it, and then I'm going to pull off the inner race on here but I'm going to take it inside and show you that and then I'll be right back 